We are inching closer and closer to Dustin Wolf being a full-time NHL goaltender, but when exactly does it start? Your Locked On Flames, your daily podcast on the Calgary Flames, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of Locked On Flames. As always, I'm your host, Jess Belmosto, and thank you so much for joining me. Uh, Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 per uh, $5 bet. It's $150 with any winning $5 bet. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started. We are going to be talking about Dustin Wolf today because that is uh, one of the many players that has question marks above, next to, around their name. <laughs> I think it's fair to assume that Dustin Wolf will be taking a step in his career this year and or this upcoming season and we're going to talk about that as well as his pedigree and how do you track development of a goaltender that is of the standard and talent of Dustin Wolf. But make sure you're subscribed to Locked On Flames wherever you get your podcasts as well as YouTube. We are here for you Monday through Friday, five days a week, your team every day. So obviously we know Dustin Wolf has been like the Flames next goaltender or French, I should say next franchise goaltender uh, for quite some time. Obviously he had to take the developmental journey to get to Uh, the NHL, and he's still technically on that. But I would say that him jumping in this season after playing one NHL, getting one NHL start last year, um, and to go to 17 starts is uh, pretty impressive. That's nearly a quarter of the season. Uh, He did, let's see, sorry, I just want to pull this up quickly here. Um, He appeared in 17 games... (laughs) This is brutal. Uh, with a 3. 3.16 goals against average and an 893 save percentage. And we know that that's not Dustin Wolf. That's not the Dustin Wolf that we know and have seen. So people are kind of, they're worried. And I don't, we're going to talk about it a little bit more later. But like you can't just expect a player especially a goaltender, to make that jump uh, smooth and quickly. Uh, Dustin Wolf obviously uh, came up when Markstrom was hurt throughout the season, as well as when Vladar had season-ending hip surgery. He came up and he won four straight games at the end of the season, and that's, you know, that's big. That was a very uh, nice confidence booster, I think, especially for him to go back to the AHL and play in the AHL playoffs. Granted, the Flames did, or the Wranglers got knocked out in the second round, but Dustin Wolf was still great. Dustin Wolf was the Dustin Wolf that we know and have come to love, and what we expect for the Flames organization in the future. The thing about Dustin Wolf is that he is such an anomaly, right? He was a late round draft pick. He is quote-unquote undersized and has just performed at a stellar level. Um, He played, so through his WHL career, uh, he had a 106, 34, and 6 record with a 1.84 goals against average, a 935 save percentage, and 24 shutouts in four seasons. Like, that's absurd to me. <laughs> That's crazy. Through four seasons. That's a whole lot of games right there, right? And to only lose 34 in regulation and six in overtime. Like, that's giant. And then, of course, his playoff performance numbers are pretty great, too. You know, uh, five and five with a 1.99 goals against average, a 9.15 save percentage, and one shutout in uh, 11 WHL playoff games. 
I can't sit here and pretend like I don't want him to make this jump. He has uh, won back-to-back Goaltender of the Year awards in the AHL. He shows up night after night for this for this organization, and he his confidence at least okay. I shouldn't say his confidence is never rocked because we obviously don't know what's going on in these people's minds. But based on the way he presents himself to the media, and he's still young, um, you know, it, it doesn't look like he's rattled. I it takes a special type of person to be a goaltender and I I would be absolutely rattled if I got shelled the way Dustin Wolf got shelled uh post trade deadline. But the other thing here is like people are always talking about him. He has had people talking about him for so long and obviously coming up through juniors and or getting drafted and then coming up through the juniors, like, and having the performance that you did, like, the expectations are high. And people were flip-flopping with Wolf towards the end of the season. Oh, he's too small to be a goaltender. He he just doesn't have it. He can't be an NHL goaltender. And then he'd win, like, two games, and then suddenly that conversation was nowhere to be found. And we're going to talk more about this next, but like you just, you can't expect a player to magically uh, smoothly make the, the transition and the jump from the, from uh, developmental league to the NHL. I think that the NHL, obviously you're seeing a whole different uh, caliber of talent because these guys aren't really only in your age range. And depending on how old you are, some of these guys might be old enough to be your dad. And uh, <laughs> some of them are a lot, you know, uh, more highly skilled than the guys you've faced in years past. So the acclimation process is something that you have to consider in all of this as well. And coming up next, we are going to talk about how to evaluate this acclimation process as well as this transition to the NHL. And we will be right back after this. FanDuel is one of my favorite apps, okay? I love going on and checking out uh, their lines and their uh, props and setting up a parlay, especially for the Rangers and uh, Florida Panther game, because I have no emotional investment but it makes the game even more fun. And it's winner take all time in the NBA and NHL. And FanDuel is giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Right now, new customers get 150 bucks in in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every playoff shot count. Tonight, the Oilers and Stars face off, so you could absolutely, uh, you know, how about a Connor McDavid goal? How about four-plus shots uh, on net for Leon Dreisaitl? Who, who are you taking in the money line? Who Do you, do you want the Stars to win? Do you want the Oilers to win? You're listening to a Flames podcast, so I'm going to guess you want the Stars to win. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every playoff shot count. Uh, FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Thank you, everyone, for hanging out with me today on Locked on Flames. Make sure you're subscribed wherever you're getting your podcasts as well as YouTube. Uh, We're here for you Monday through Friday, five days a week, your team every day. How do you evaluate Dustin Wolf's transition, right? Um, There's different thresholds, (laughs) I would say, for every player because uh, not every player has the amount of success that a different player on your team might have. Um, and you have Dustin Wolf, obviously, who has this gorgeous, sexy, uh, impressive resume. Like, you want this in, in your organization. You want this guy to be the next franchise goaltender. Are you kidding me? So the standards are high for him. 
Whereas you have a guy who has kind of, you know, gone through, you know, maybe college and played like, uh, I mean, Dustin Wolf played American hockey too. So like, you know, in the developmental leagues and whatnot. So like everyone, like, are you coming over from international play? Are you adjusting to rink size? Like regardless of what that standard is, you're going to need more than 18 NHL appearance, game appearances to evaluate this. I do think that it's harder um, to uh, critique. Like, there's more pressure on Dustin Wolf because of how well he has played in the past and how well he has acclimated from uh, the W to the AHL. And people didn't know how that transition was going to go. He slid right in and it was fine. What a surprise, right? But you can't do that for every league, especially like making the jump to the NHL. That is huge. We just talked about it. You are playing against guys that are a lot older than you, guys that are on the same age level as you, guys that are faster, that have been doing this longer, that you haven't played against, so you don't know... You can't read them as well. You are playing, again, at a much faster pace. So you have to track and read things differently. And that's tough, right? You can't, like, it's po- it's obviously possible to accomplish. But it's a lot to just be thrown into. And you have to, like, look <laughs> at all the statistics and not just you know what like uh like Jake Ottinger right you can't just look at him and how he came in to the NHL and just like smash it out of the park and just use that and say look he did it and he played uh he played college uh hockey and we're going to talk more about Jake Ottinger here in a second but I think for Dustin Wolf like you, you're gonna have to look at these benchmarks differently look at your 25 your first 25 games, okay? The latter portion of his starts last season were tough. They were post trade deadline. You're shut you you were missing one of your two true shutdown guys in with Tanev leaving and you just weren't <laughs> playing behind a team that was particularly strong defensively. And Being dominant in the W or the AHL is fantastic, right? We we know this. Those are very positive signs. But that doesn't mean you're, A, cut out for success past that. How many times have you seen players that have played well and then they make the jump to the NHL and it's like, where did that player go? Or B, you're not guaranteed a smooth transition like you may have seen previously in their career. And that I think that's the biggest thing that I have to harp on. Because there is this expectation to just come in and win. There has been a lot of talk uh, recently. I, I mean, Blake Coleman just did an interview with um, I believe it was Andy uh, Strickland. And he talked about like how it took him a little bit to get adjusted to Calgary due to the altitude change. And like, obviously Dustin Wolf has been here for a little bit, but like that's something to take into consideration too, like those outside factors. And I don't think that you can just look at these first 18 games and say, Dustin Wolf, you are too small for the NHL. Dustin Wolf, you are perfect for the NHL. Dustin Wolf, you will be an all-star goaltender for the Calgary Flames. You will win a Stanley Cup in your... Like, there is no way to project and predict any of that. And I think that the sample size is still far too small for us to be making any sort of real judgment call. The only thing that we can say is he needs to (laughs) be seeing more time in the NHL in order for the organization to determine what his ceiling is. And there is a lot of weight on those kids' shoulders because I still remember when 
he like obviously he was drafted and Jacob Markstrom was uh, still early on in his contract. It was like that summer and it was just kind of like agreed upon like okay, Dustin Wolf is doing great and then by the time uh, Markstrom gets to year five, four or five of his contract, maybe Dustin Wolf is ready for the NHL. And that's where we're at now. That we are approaching year four and of Jacob Markstrom's contract, I should say. And we're looking at things that that same way. Dustin Wolf is probably going to be taking over for Jacob Markstrom at some point this year. Is it going to be immediately or is it going to be mid season? But regardless, like that that time is coming and I, I'm thinking about the team that has been laid out in front of him at this very moment. And I am just hoping that they do something to tighten up that blue line. Because you cannot put <laughs> any goaltender out there and expect them to do the work of their defensive pairings night after night after night, right? Like, obviously, you'll have success with as much success as you can, I guess, with Rasmus Anderson and Mackenzie Weger. Okay. Like, you know, that those, that that pairing can show up and perform and outdo each other every night and kind of carry extra weight. Um, Oliver Shillington, assuming he comes back, he is a great puck mover. He is a great penalty killer and he's an integral part of the Flames defense. And, you know, say you do end up promoting two guys from the AHL and hope that they kind of find the same success that Pospisil and Zari had. You don't know what could happen. I think that what's going to need to happen is everyone to give this kid some breathing room. (laughs) And it's going to be a long road regardless. Like, regardless if he was coming into this team and it was, you know... Uh, Stanley Cup level caliber team or a team that was like close to that um, or playing for a team where he's at now. I think (laughs) no one's set up immediate for set up for immediate success. And that's tough, right? That is tough. And you're going to have to take your lumps like we've talked about. Uh, I think a lot of the lumps have already kind of started. But now, the more shots Dustin Wolf gets in there and faces, the quicker this process goes. He needs to get comfortable, settle in, and figure out what works for him at the NHL level. I know the Flames have a really good goalie coach, so I'm not really worried about that too much. Uh, It's just a matter of him getting acclimated to the NHL lifestyle. And coming up next, (laughs) we're going to talk about next season's workload and what could possibly be on the horizon for this youngster. Thanks, everyone, for hanging out with me today on Lockdown Flames. Make sure you're following me on Twitter at Jess Belmosto. Uh, I have lots of hockey tweets for you there, as well as random commentary throughout the day, because I just live online. It's a good place. Not really a good place to be, but make sure you're following me. Um, I guess there's a few things that can be true when you look at the Flames situation, right? The Flames are trading a goaltender this summer. Is it going to be Jacob Markstrom or Dan Vladar? Which one, right? And the Flames aren't carrying three goaltenders. <laughs> like, those feel like very obvious statements, but there has to be some sort of resolution here. Like, just one final punch and kick to the log to free up this log jam. And welcome Dustin Wolf with open arms f- full time. Or cl- I shouldn't say full time, but uh, closer to what he will be, he where he has played. Um, 
you know, who they're trading, still wildly up in the air. We know this. We don't know if teams are even interested in Dan Vladar or if Jacob Markstrom would even still go through with a trade. I think, you know, you can draw whatever conclusions you want to draw from this. And what would make the most sense, I think, trading Markstrom, you'd obviously get the larger return, and then you're strapped with two pretty young, inexperienced goaltenders, which is fine. You know, again, these are some of the lumps that you're going to need to take as a team. And what does a workload for Dustin Wolf look like in this situation, especially when Dan Vladar hasn't had a, a primary starting role in his NHL career. You know, he played uh, for the Providence Bruins and uh, poor kid made three appearances in the bubble playoffs. The Bruins left him hung out to dry and then they traded him. And obviously Jacob Markstrom has been the starting goaltender for the Flames since then. So he, and he hasn't had much of an opportunity. He just, he had a very short leash, I would say with Daryl Sutter. And this season, Ryan Huska just, um, he didn't do too much rotating, which that's his prerogative. That's how he wants to roll. I think that expecting um, Wolf to start like 30 games might be a a lot. His first year, I think that that's, I mean, maybe you can roll with that. I don't. I don't see them doing like a one, a one, two, like every other game, every other game sort of deal. Um, I mean, you could, you realistically could, cause you need to get them each as much playing time as possible. And if one happens to strike gold, then you are going to, I guess, ride with that goaltender. There is still that question and potential delusion of, Fans, including myself, rooting for a playoff run. I don't know what this team is going to look like. And we're going to have more clarity on this in about a month in like five weeks, really, after free agency opens. So it's going to be interesting. And I I just want to see Dustin Wolf set up for success, okay? As much as the Flames can do that. I, I don't expect them to go out there and like move heaven and earth for another Chris Tanev sort of defenseman. I don't think that that's really in the cards for them. Um, But they need, they need to, if they want to win some games, they're going to need to do some something with this blue line. I talked about it on Wednesday's or sorry, Tuesday's episode uh, about some potential improvements there. Uh, with some free agents and I mean is the goal to even finish within a few spots of a wild card a few points within a while uh, I mean you're not assembling a team to lose we've talked about this team uh, never getting to Chicago or San Jose territory and I think that that's still true I, I think that this team is going to go out there and play obviously that's what they're paid to do. But they're not going to be able to perform at a level, a competitive level. It's not negative. It's just analysis. Because we all saw how post-deadline Flames hockey went. And that was that was that was a tough watch. I don't know about you guys, but I certainly didn't enjoy it. And I'm sure that they <laughs> I'm sure that the front office saw everything that we saw and said, well, this can't go on for 82 games. We have to figure out a way to fix this. And I'm sure that there are some chefs and cooks in the kitchen whipping something up because, you know, you could trade. Uh, you can trade up in the draft, too. You can... Obviously, sign free agents. You might be able to promote a guy or two from within your organization. It's very difficult to tell what the 
how they'll improve this team because there there's so much to work on and i feel like you can easily acquire uh some scoring through free agency i think that that's going to be a fairly easy task i don't think you're going to find yourself like a 30 goal scorer but i mean tyler Toffoli, if you would like to come back to calgary um you you obviously know who to call to have that happen um sean monahan he's a free agent as well i believe so why don't we actually don't give him a call that he has had great success since leaving calgary and we should keep it that way i really wonder how many games is dustin wolf gonna start is it reasonable to think that they're gonna do a one one a and one b tandem sort of thing i i just i don't (laughs) <laughs> I don't think it's unreasonable for Dustin Wolf to take on that workload considering his workload in the AHL. However, like we have stated this entire episode, it's an entirely different ball game. But at least you're flying private. <laughs> And that will do it for today's episode of Locked on Flames. Thank you all for hanging out with me and uh, making Locked on Flames part of your day. Make sure you're subscribed wherever you're getting your podcasts as well as on YouTube. We are here for you Monday through Friday, five days a week, your team every day. And I will be back tomorrow with some more news out of Calgary.